Welcome to Regis Geometry 1.2, Set Operations. The last time we began to learn some things about sets, we learned how to uh, express a set in list notation and also in set builder notation. We learned how to look at a set and understand if one set is a subset of another or if it is a proper subset of another. We learned about equal sets and we learned about equivalent sets. We learned how to talk about elements of a set. And we begin this concept of Venn diagrams. Now we're going to proceed with that today. We want to learn to do operations with sets. There are several things we could do. We could recognize what we would call the union of sets. The union of sets would talk about all the elements of one combined with all the elements of another, but we do not repeat any element. So let me give you an example. If I want to talk about C as the set A union B, I wouldn't even have to label it C, I would look for everything A has and everything that B has without repeating any. So I could just list everything with A straight across and then add anything, but I want to keep them in order. So one, they both have a 1, so I don't only need to write it one time. They both have a 2, I only need to write that one time. We have a 3, we don't have a 4 or 5. Set B has a 6, set A has a 7, set B has an 8, and set A has a 9. So the union would gather up all the elements that either one of them has. We could, of course, illustrate that with a Venn diagram. And let's look at this Venn diagram for a minute. Notice I have this U up in the corner. That stands for universal. The universal set means all the elements that are relevant to, to this particular problem. Now, I notice that if I look here on the left side one circle, I have the label A, and I also including the ones that they share in common, I can read 1, 2, 3, 7, 9, all the elements of A. If I look here, I can read the title or the um, name of the set B, and I can also read, including the ones they share in common, all the elements of B, 1, 2, 6, and 8. So I can read all the elements of A, I can read all the elements of B, and I can see very quickly what they share in common. Now, if I were to shade a union B, I would shade all, all of this, all of what they have in common, and all of this. So hopefully that's clear to you, and you can look in your book for a little bit better picture of shading. Maybe I'll use another color here for that. All right, let me talk about the second operation we can do with sets, and that would be what we call the intersection. If we say A intersect B in set notation, we are looking for the elements that they share, that they have in common, and that would be the 1 and the 2. Notice union combines all the elements either one has. Intersection looks at only those things they share in common. So let me draw another Venn diagram. Now notice in this Venn diagram, my circle with the A is the same as the one above with all the elements listed the same, and my circle of set B is the same. The only thing that will differ here is when I am doing this diagram, my shading will be different. Now I only want to represent what the, the intersection and so the intersection will only be this section right here. I don't want to actually cover over those numbers, but I'm having a hard time doing it on this illustration. So that section only will be shaded. 
Now we could also talk about the term disjoint sets. Disjoint sets means that they would have nothing in common. So if I had set C with the elements 4 and 5, and I want to talk about the intersection of A and C, the answer would be the null set, or there are no elements that they share in common. So we would say the vocabulary works this way. The sets A and C are disjoint sets. Now the next operation we can talk about is the complement. Now the complement of a set is what we call a unary operation. That means it does not need, it's not comparing with another set. So let's say M is the set of all positive integers. How would I really write that? Let's go ahead and do that properly. The set of all elements x such that x are positive integers. And then we would say This is the symbol for the complement of x. I mean, the complement of m. I'm sorry. So, anything that would be a negative integer or zero. would be the complement of M. It would be all the other things we could be talking, talking about confined to my universal set, which I would have to define. In this case, maybe my universal set are all the integers. Integers consist of positive integers, negative integers, and zero. So if my universal set is all integers, then that would be the complement. Now, let's draw one more Venn diagram here. If this is an illustration for set M, all the positive integers, then the complement of M would be illustrated with everything outside of M shaded in. Now do your problem set in this uh, look. Make sure you read through and look at all the examples carefully. Do your problem set. Check your answers. Uh, some of these problems are going to be quite complicated as we start combining this idea of intersection, union, and complements all together. And it, it does get kind of fun. It, it is uh, logic problems for you, and I think you'll enjoy these. Go ahead and bring any questions you have to class next time.